The fortunate unfortunates children who witness impossible creatures by Deborah L. Hatswell. I would, of course, like to thank every witness who reached out to me over the decades and shared their experience. I know just how hard it can be to not only find someone to report your encounter to, but the very idea of speaking it aloud to another human can be paralyzing for some, myself included. Thank you for trusting me enough in the beginning to open up and for the many conversations over the years together we trashed ar- around theory and thought in the hopes of one day working all this out what we saw and experienced in a world that does not accept anything out of the old box or alternative in any way and the people out there who may one day be a future witness to something similar remember you are not alone in fact we are many all of the accounts contained in the book came into me personally, so we sourced on the internet by myself and search team. I also like to thank my family who have helped me every step of the way, my daughters, husband, mum and my late father who taught me to stand up for myself always, regards of foe T.J. Cosley, 47.19. How many times have you heard this statement? I love t- to see something that, oh wow, well, you're lucky. I would give you anything to see that up close. Or oh, my favourite, why didn't you take a picture to prove that what you saw, being a witness, something possible is not likely spiritual meeting. Most important, imagine, must imagine. In his book, I explain what is really what it is really like being a child witness, something nobody could explain away or smooth it over quickly, or hurried explanation given by a parent who wants to help their child who doesn't know how to. Children have vivid imagination or flights of fancy. It's something we encourage in them, but this can be a double-edged sword. It was for me, in writing this book, I'm hoping... I need to express how it feels to spend your whole life trying to prove to others that you are, in fact, not mad and indeed or in need of medical invention. You said we saw something or some someone the day that it was affected on the day of your life, entire life. As a child, we don't ask to see them or set your equipment like a researcher, hoping for a glimpse of a said creature or monster. It happens by ha- happiness, a fleeting moment frozen in time, a fact etched in, my, in your memory, and for most of us, it's a w- way horrifying, traumatic experience. It refuses to go away, but contained, fear contained will. These effects can leave you some witnesses an almost PTSD condition, affecting them through life, and all the fear may lessen. We look at with adult eyes. It never really leaves. To be honest, deep down, we always be that child frozen in those seconds of time. I struggled for decades with her encounter. I know many witnesses in his box did the same. Hopefully, we have set in place somewhere people can report these events and receive validation that are not alone. As I shall said, each for each greatness of validated account in the same area they encountered the creature or where the monster's description fits what they saw too. I give the person involved a feeling of companionship, a feeling of being believed by others. Who understand sometimes those these valuation reports can take decades to be to be reported her future sightings have not yet taken place for each new report fits like a cog into this huge puzzle where sometimes 
the cog enables us at the door to open a screen or slide we you suddenly understand a small pattern of behaviour or match its description of habitat. In it, you will notice the term green belt mentioned in most of the accounts. There seems to be a pattern of all these experiences regardless of what ca- county the event took place. Children playing on disused land, old cross scrubland, buildings, swing, swings and playing in the woods along these routes. It's, if I started my search career from a point rather than 30 something years ago, I'd probably use the term green belt creatures. The words are used so often. Eyewitnesses encounter are not only children, they are aged between 6 and 83 from all walks of life, sensible or evil, doing everyday tasks who sometimes who see something impossible to explain. Many of the adults accounts start with I was out with a dog. I was just going for take, taking my usual walk. There's another, but that's for another walk, another time. I need to take back to 1982 where everything changed my life and the world has never been the same since. I was an only ta- grew up in an only town. My mum worked for the local authority. My dad worked at the famous Bodleton's Brewery. My father, my family, worked in the docks and the mines of Salford for generations. My grandfather owned a local scrapyard, or tatters as they called it then, a man with a horse and cart who collected any metal you didn't want or any junk. There was no use. He would reward you with a dolly blue, a donkey stone or a balloon and to return. Simple, hard-working folk who lived in this ordinary mill town in the northwest of England, Salford. His working-class town bomb, bombed heavily in the Second World War due to the Manchester ship canal that runs through our town. The river Arwell runs down the north and out to the sea in the valley. It rolls along was my playground as a child back where there's a limited restrictions Restriction of fun, riding the cart horse or catching sicklebacks in the jam jars and foxbone carried home in your welly. We would buy wooden dens that would, were guarded by fierce children with stones and duckers and are ready to defend these folks' ideal times and fond memories. As a child of the town, I was lucky in the sense that my family would take off for the weekends and school holidays to the countryside of the beach. Our grandfather, Glen, Glen, would take us on horse fairs and fates where hundreds of families from the local towns and countryside would meet, sell livestock and tell, share tales. My grandfather, my, my dad raised most of my best greyhounds to come out. My mother had horses, ducks, geese and chickens. We raised, we raised Jack Russell Terriers. My dad raised them, some of the best greyhounds to come out of the island in the 80s and 90s. We travelled to race them at every dog crack across the northwest. My dad was also an avid fisherman and my sisters. I grew up in the banks of the river, of the near, of the river that flew there, here, the Severn and the Trent. Some of my mo- most treasurable memories growing up and getting up at 4 a.m. to load a car or van, lunch is packed and flask is filled, flask filled, bait and rods and kids in the back. Every trick a different woodland or corpse. But 1982, that stopped for me. A place I used to play had another correlation that year where I, never ha- where I had never experienced fear. There was now a hidden danger in every bush, an enemy behind every tree, hidden down in every ditch. It was an ordinary day, these perfect, those perfect days, spring and summer, when it was not too hot and the breeze blows easily, with not a hint of rain or cloud in the sky. Days when the school seemed like a punishment, and the school jumpers were compulsory, and thousands of hot teenagers were taking the mock exams, heading heads nodding and sweat building, myself included. The school I attended was an old Victorian mansion called 
by the summer owned by the summer hill family the grounds that surrounded it were nice but little left to the world a park was definitely across the school directly across the school the new school building was added in a few decades before it was a square concrete assault on the eyes of houses of Windsor. It seemed really easy for teachers to spy you skipping school or, or school trail kid wishing they also skipped would point out the window and dub you in. I had skipped the odd day before. Mum, if you're reading it, it's too late to ground me. I found my academic side of school as easy. I would get bored so quickly. Most of my days spent staring at the window, daydreaming. The social side was a complete puzzle to me. I just winged it most days, hoping I used the quick response. I had not shouted at inappropriately when I found something exciting or held my interest. I had lots of friends back then, all in a similar position. No doubt they didn't realise the child, most of the, your friends, had the same fears and peer pressures. So I, was ne- so I was never one to say no to a new venture. I did have one peculiar friend, particular friend back then. I spent most of my time with my partner in crime to speak, much braver than I usually usually to be found smoking around the back of the gym or smoker's corner as we called it I had gone into my lessons in the morning and I had two study periods after lunch so if I was missing anything other than revision it was too nice a day to be stuck indoors lunch would be would be two siblings between sittings between two, 12 noon and one thirty. I can't remember the sitting I was at on that week I do remember being a four-year-old. They had a rotation, because the walk, because the walk between the two buildings took fifteen minutes. It could, and we could do that four times a day. I don't remember how much before I saw him, or about an hour and a half, the time it took me to get home after event. This is, this is. There's an old in the wilderness house in the middle of the park. Country grounds, golf course, and a meadow, animal enclosures, and goats, rabbits, horses, and memory of birds, where a fantastic glass house and triple plants from all across the world, like a huge rain forest within a glass dome. A glass house is always hot. Steam would rise from a huge quarry, quarry park pond in the centre. There was also a Scream Butterfly House, which is a steamy bar, it was like a steamy bar. Most folks called it a hot house. The hot house was open to the public and could be visited by for free. There was also a sensory garden for the blind, lots of tactile, heavy scented plants, and herbs and braille metal plaques. Each flower beneath each flower or shrub. Every time I smelt Labrador, wild garlic, I would transport it right. Right back to my warm childhood days, the gardens of the seventies were beautifully tended. One of my family members worked there. My dad would take me every time he had a chance. I have many pictures of myself as a kid at Bully at Blue Hill until the day that day in eighty two. By nineteen eighty two, the park was a rough estate. Many groundsmen had been laid off. Old houses and process being turned into art gallery. Um, a mirror museum. It was changed so many times in decades that now stands boat deserted and vandalised. Very sorry sight indeed. Between the house and the sensory garden there was an old Victorian flower bed. It sounds delightful, but it was a tangle weeds by this point. Low and box pivot were all in between twined with eroded endiums and ivy left to grow to around twenty five feet high and between that there was a it was flattened down area almost like a bed of some kind and we would climb it 
in through the brambles and nettles, and you, you position in there, you can see out. But people keep, but people ask why would not have an idea you're in there at all. There at all. There at all. If you stayed quiet and help kept yourself hidden in there till around 3.20 p.m., you could start walking with the other kids and it looked like as if you'd been at school all along. That was the plan for the afternoon. And within two hours, I was running from that park, crying and screaming, running from the monster thought that had come to kill me. You're probably in hot pursuit, in my mind. As without thinking, I ran home without any real thought given to an action. The only fear that day was being caught or wagging. It wouldn't have been fun being marched in the school the day after with a clipped ear in mind of by my mother, who wouldn't stand for such messing about on my part, or even some older kids who would move us off, uh, who would move us off into the open, where the old teachers, sneaking, quick smoke, would see us or one of the parkies who would drag you back to the school shoppish, given a chance. I remember taking the top of the pots, talking about top of the pots, and a chance, and I think we were making plans what to do that evening after tea. We were laughing and giggling and set in a sprawling position on the grass, just looking up to the sky, forgetting we were running a risk of being caught. We forgot to be quiet. And to be honest, we're making a racket, as most teenage girls do. I remember looking up and watching the leaves as they moved out of the corner of my eye. In my peripheral vision, I saw a split-second movement in the shade. I looked at it thinking bird at first, or cat, but nothing moved at all. Its movement, like the movement before the storm hits, or the ship hits the ground. And everything goes quiet as your brain processes danger you're in, and it sends the signals to your legs to run. I realised that I was looking at, at what I was looking at was not the colour bird, or the f- f- flat, or that of a ginger cat tom. My eyes the same colour as amber contained in her possible face. Even in the moment, being down to earth, girl, I thought, oh God, it's a teacher. We're in for it now. Excuses already being trills in my head. If only I'd thought to run then, before I, he looked out, before I saw a face I'll never forget, no matter how hard it, I tried to. Before I could rise from that ground, before I could rise from the ground, but before my legs started to run, before I screamed a scream, I never duplicated it in my 51 years. I saw something that looked like a man and an ape, but combined in the same way, pushed together and one form to form one unit. Hair and hairy in hair, that was long, dark, dark as brown, with highlights of auburn and sun caught it. it which way, which in a way sounds romantic. It wasn't. It was like a colour of a red setter. It bites the hand, feeding, the, holding the biscuit. Something so beautiful in colour, but deadly in smarts, long after the injury. The sentence he looked like a man and ape combined. In one, I have used to describe him ever since, simply because that's what he looked like. The old caveman, weathered and worn, or escaped ape, somehow human. And they ate at the same time. A needlefoil, a troglodyte, looking creature with hair everywhere, its thick jaw and pronounced bro bridge, a terrifying face with a slack jaw looking back at me within the mess of foliage. I don't remember smell or sound, just terror. I looked at him, then my friend, and without ever go- knowing why we, we rose to f- run, I pushed her hard as I could to the ground without even thinking through the process. Now I know it's primal instinct to survive. I have felt guilty about that moment every, every time I think of it. Even now, even now, I was up and running and I was looked behind me to see a, a 
he was in pursuit of what, of all that. She was up and running too. I saw him simply melt back into the greenery, as he was never there to start with. His teeth were like ours, no fanged, not all pointed like a dog, square like homely, just larger. I guess from my position, he was taller than a tall man, probably about round seven foot foot in height, with dark tan skin. And even though he had a weathered face, I don't think he was old. More that he lived outside in the sun, like men who used to use tarmac on the road, darkly tanned and weathered. His eyes were like ours, but not, not clean and white. More yellowish, a jaundiced look on him. I concentrated in his eyes and his teeth, waiting for him to rush and grab us. And he'd begin <coughs> whatever he did between his gills. He found in the woods, or oh, an arm hit me in such forms that I would be flat on my back. These were made within seconds, but none of this happened. She ran one way forwards, self sick and I run. You've been listening to extracts from the fortunate unfortunates. Children Who Witnessed Law Impossible Creatures by Deborah L. Hatswell. Available on Netflix, on Amazon.com as a paper book for £11.99.